Hi there. Uh, I'm so thankful that you are with me uh, yet again. Uh, what a glorious time of year this is. What a glorious season. And we are on the cusp of celebrating and rejoicing that the Savior has come and been born for us. And uh, part of our journey then throughout Advent as we have been studying what I'm calling the Christ of Christmas, we're looking at a uh, a variety of angles and perspectives on the reason for which Jesus came. And this is summarized in, in, a, in a variety of themes and a variety of, of uh, causes and a variety of tasks and roles that Jesus came to fulfill and accomplish. And, and this is all so that we might be redeemed and received as, uh, as God's people through faith in Jesus Christ and his work uh, on the cross. And today, we are going to briefly take a look at the fact that Jesus came to give us, to, to send us uh, the Holy Spirit to adopt us. And so Jesus came that we might be adopted as sons and daughters of God. Uh, I'll show you how that is found in the text of Scripture in just a second, but let's pray first. Oh Lord, we pray and thank you that you love us and that it is by your work you clear away and, uh, and make the payment for our sin and for the judgment and condemnation we rightly live under as sinners separated from God. We thank you that it is not just a work that you do and, and then we are tasked with the work of, of uh, earning it, but you give it to us freely by your grace as we do one thing, and that is believe and receive by faith you, Lord Jesus, as our Savior. And the promise is that you flood us and rush in to redeem us by sending the Holy Spirit in our lives. So would you speak now and help us to see, Jesus, that you came, that we might be adopted. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So a couple verses. One comes from John chapter 14 and the other from Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. John 14, 6 and 7 says this, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And then uh, Paul writing to the Galatian believer says this in Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, And because you are sons and daughters, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So Jesus comes at the, the sending of the Father, and after Jesus accomplishes the purpose for which he came, and that is to be the Savior, the Redeemer, the one who pays the price for our sin, and uh, to clear and open the way that we might be received through him by faith, receiving him. I want to remind you, it is not that we are automatically in just because Jesus died and was raised again. John tells us in John, uh, toward the end of his gospel, these are written that you might believe and by believing you'd have life in his name. And so we are tasked with the one responsibility of believing by faith Jesus Christ. And so Jesus is sent for this purpose, and then the Spirit is also sent. And so there's a double sending. And so the Son is sent, and then the Spirit is sent. And the Spirit is sent to apply to us this work of a redemption. And, and I really have uh, three ways I'm going to break that down according to these verses in John 14 and Galatians chapter 4. That... The Spirit is sent to adopt us, that is to claim us as God's own that we receive by faith, and this makes us to be those who have full rights as sons and daughters in the family of God. We, we are adopted so that we are sons and daughters just as Adam and Eve had been before they sinned. And so the first is the, the Spirit is sent to adopt us, and in adopting us applies to our lives the work of Christ. 
and as we are adopted in the work of Christ to apply to our lives as we receive and trust Jesus by faith, then the Holy Spirit also is sent for this third purpose, and that is to activate within us God's power and the graciousness of his gifts. And so we are adopted that we might have applied to us the work of redemption and thereby by being God's people by faith in Jesus Christ, we then have this activated power of the Holy Spirit. And, and this is what makes us to be these new creations that Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It, it's what Paul is talking about in Philippians when he said, for me to live as Christ, to die as gain, and, and that I count all things as rubbish that I might gain Christ. It's what Paul means when he says, I have been crucified with Christ. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who gave himself for me. Friends, this is the gospel. This is the gospel that, that is not just for salvation, that is rescue and pardon, but it is for sanctification too, so that we might be conformed to the image of Christ and participate in the spread of the gospel as the ambassadors of Christ, who are the light and salt of the world. And so uh, the gospel has the effect of saving us and sanctifying us. And, and this, my friends, is what is begun at Christmas as the Redeemer comes, is sent, and thereby fulfilling his command and commissioning the Holy Spirit is thereby sent. And we see that Jesus came that the Spirit might be sent, that we would be received and adopted as sons and daughters. So Jesus came that we might also be adopted as sons and daughters. Are you a son of or daughter of the Lord and we are sons and daughters not because God just makes a claim upon us and then forces this work upon us but the grace of God is the hand of God reaching out and so God reaches his hand of grace out to us willing ready eager pleading that you would respond and we respond by faith which is our hand reaching excuse me, reaching back to receive Jesus. God's hand in grace takes the first step and we respond by faith. This is how we become adopted as sons or daughters, by faith in Jesus Christ through the work and power of the Holy Spirit. Is that your story? Is that your identity? Is that your life? Is that the work of grace God's grace? Is that the work of God's Holy Spirit? Is that the, the activating power of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in your life? That can be yours as you respond by faith to Jesus Christ, who came to redeem us and thereby the Holy Spirit sent to adopt us. And that's what Paul is getting at when he says, and because you are sons or daughters, by faith in Jesus, God also sent the Spirit of His Son, the Holy Spirit, into our hearts that we would cry, Abba, Father, you are my dad, my heavenly dad. Let us pray, and may this be your story by faith in Jesus. Father, I do pray for not just us to reckon with the sending of your Son to be our Savior, but the sending equally so of the Holy Spirit to be our sanctifier, to be the one that adopts us and applies the work of redemption that Jesus accomplished and activates us in us this eternal life and this grace that leads to also your gifts to grow in Jesus, to be more like Jesus, and to serve like Jesus. So God, do this work in our hearts, and may Christmas be a joyous day for us as we remember and rejoice that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, that we would be adopted by the Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Well, thank you so much for being with me again today. Uh, we are just one day from Christmas Eve. Tomorrow will be Christmas Eve, and I hope you would consider joining uh, maybe us via live stream or in person for worship. Maybe you already have a church. Maybe you're uh, somewhere else around in the country. Please get with a body of believers to worship Jesus Christ, to celebrate the, the birth of Jesus as our Savior, and to receive and respond to him by faith. And as always, like I, like I just said, you may certainly join us via live stream as we celebrate the birth of our Savior at 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Well, God be with you, and I'll see you again tomorrow.